Okay, so this is going to be a Trapunto tutorial. Um, I'm going to do it in two parts. So the first part is getting your Trapunto drawing, which I drew this up for this um, occasion, and tracing it onto your fabric. Literally just popped it underneath and it's very hard, uh, very easy to see, not hard to see under, and traced it on there with a soft pencil so that it doesn't uh, make too dark a mark. So once I've done that, then I need to figure out exactly what areas I'm going to do as Trapunto. And I can see I've missed a, a petal here. So I'm going to just draw one in. Um, that's not my Trapunto line. So what I've decided is I'm going to do the petals and the centres of these two big flowers, Trapunto, and everything else will be just stitched as, um, as free motion stitching. So what you will need is you'll need a product called Dacron, and if you can't get Dacron you can use about well, probably three, two or three layers of cotton, but I find that Dacron's really good because it's quite thick and when you put your fingers together through it you can't feel, it doesn't work through, so it's still quite thick. Um, and, and secure. So what I'm going to do is place the, the Dacron down and put my fabric on top and you can see it's really really cushy. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just pin it a little bit just so I can hold on to it and I'm going to do a basting stitch around all these lines here. These ones are the ones that are going to be all poofy including that one in there so and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, stitch over once I've done the, um, the basting I'll then stitch over with a permanent stitch but the basting's there just to hold it in place so I can cut the Dacron away and then do my permanent stitch and I'm going to use a free motion foot, a darning foot my feed dogs are down, the bobbin's um, got plenty in it and I'm just using a, a light grey on the top just so I can see the basting stitch um, my tension I'm going to pop up to about 6 um, just for I know this machine it just uh, likes to have it at about six some it could be about five but um, you might need to do some testing on your machine to figure out where your uh, top tension should be after we've actually done this then I'm going to end up using a wool batting and that's going to go behind it um, this is going to be a pillow top and it's going to be nice and squishy and fluffy so first things first I'll pop this out of the way. I'm going to throw a couple of pins in just to hold it still for myself. <clears throat> and I don't have to go right through, I just have to hold the top. And because I'm using the free motion foot, <clears throat> I do need to keep the machine at a um, a good speed. I want to. Not, I, I don't want it too fast, but I don't want it too slow because I don't want my stitches to be really, really small because it is only a basting stitch. So you'll find that it's quite squishy underneath your machine, and you can see it's, you know, very full. So first things first, I'm just going to go outside. I'm going to grab my bottom thread and pull it up. So I can get a hold of it and I'm going to put that at slow because I want to get a big big stitch. I like to work towards myself so I can see where I'm going and I'm going to come around these and once I've gone around the first one then I'll go around the second one and then take it off to trim it. Um, so here we go. Oop. Feed dogs are down, yes, machine's telling me off. So I'm literally doing really big stitches and you can see my top thread's gotten away so I'm going to trim that off get that out of the way okay and you'll you notice I'm just going just inside the line um, probably about one eighth of an inch inside that line best I can do nice big stitch okay so I'm just going around like I said
and I'm stopping starting so I can have a good grip on it. I, it I'm not rushing around it as you can tell. You notice I don't sew as quick as people think which I've said before. I've actually realized how um, fussy I can be in my own work, not on other people's of course because um, that's their own business. I don't begrudge anyone for being not perfect or over perfect. Poor old machine, she needs to service it again. Now I'm going to stop here, um, I'm actually going to go up here a little bit and come down there and go around this one all the way around and then go down here and the reason being is because I need to cut the outside of it first, I don't need to worry about the detail yet until I put the other wadding on and sew it as a complete piece. So although I said I was going to go around the first one first and the second but I think because they're overlapping I can... Um, do it that way but I need to go in a little bit just because um, that will help with my cutting a bit later and you'll see why I need to turn it towards me so you can see I've come in a little bit further and then come up there so I can work back into this one and I will actually um, travel up there and still go a quarter inch in Oh, sorry an eighth of an inch in and keep going around if you wanted to go up to that previous line you could it doesn't really matter because you're not going to cut along there that's just um, for you to travel from one point to the other she's squeaky You can probably hear it. I um, probably need to oil my machine, <laughs> especially after doing the previous tutorial in uh, couching with all the fluffy wools and that. And um, I might do a, a small tutorial on how to do that, how to clean your machine properly in between projects um, after every bobbin change. You can see how it's holding down the Dacron. Um, it's creating that puffy look, which is what we love about the Trapunto. Um, that would be cat hair there. Apologise. I have a little kitten that just loves to get into my stuff at the moment. Still working out boundaries. I get my. Uh, workshop up and running, my room, there'll be no cats. <laughs> so you can see here, I'm going around that little one. Now if you wanted to go around all those little ones and make them puffy as well, you can, but you've got to remember, you're going to cut out between every single one of those and that can be really, really time consuming and it's a really good opportunity for you to cut through your fabric. So sometimes keeping it simple with a trapunto, especially when you're learning, is a good idea. Um, nice big bold patterns um, so that you uh, don't make too many boo-boos as you go along. So you've noticed I've just come past that line there, so I want to be on the one eighth, you know, one one eighth of an inch in, uh, roughly, give or take a few mil. And because uh, it is a basting stitch, I'm not overly stressed if it's not perfect. When I do my final stitch, that will be really quite um, more uh, exact, as much as I can get it anyway.
The other thing with the Trapunto is it needs to be a completely enclosed design. I couldn't Trapunto that without making it an actual enclosed design. So um, to I would have to make it um, a, a two, two rows of stitching, like it would have to be that way, otherwise it won't work in a, a Trapunto style. So um, that's another thing to keep in mind. It might be nice to think that you're going to Trapunto all these beautiful lines, but uh, reality is, is that they would have to be thicker than you first initiated. And back to where I started. And I can cut off. So that has, as you can see, I've gone all the way around the big flower and I've gone all the way around the smaller one and I've literally gone around on the inside of that because even though I've got a little bit up there I don't think that I'll actually be putting that into the trapunto because I think it will be way too tedious to get that tiny little bit in there I'm not into um, hurting my my brain so we'll go with the easy easy options so I'm going to now show you how to cut away your fabric from uh, sorry your um, Dacron from your, your uh, fabric and uh, get that trapunto style into the next stage. Okay, I'm going to use a pair of duck scissors, but you can use uh, really fine little embroidery scissors, anything that'll give you a nice sharp point. These are good because I can get flat in the fabric and I'll show you that in a second. So we're going to turn it over and you can see where the stitching is. So I'm going to cut away most of the bulk so I can get close. Because I've got a flat edge on the bottom I can actually feel the fabric underneath. So I put my hand, because I'm going to try and not cut my hand, between the fabric and the scissors and you'll see what I mean. So I'm cutting away and I'm doing it a rough first go. We'll go around this quite a few times. I'll um, speed up the camera for you so you don't have to bore yourself to tears. So again, just making sure that you've got a gap between the fabric and the Dacron before you go trimming um, because uh, you probably most likely, I, I learnt this uh, technique of Kimmy Bruner and uh, she did say to me at the time that, um, that uh, you're most likely going to cut through your top fabric at some point but it's not a disaster because there's always something, an applique, a um, button, something that you can put over the top of it and uh, mask your uh, little mistakes. Okay. We'll call the creative license again. So I'll just remove that back on. So now we've got like a little um, fluffy bit around it. Now this is where it gets tedious so I really want to get my finger under there and I want to get close so I want to get to about there so you can see that I'm right up against that stitch that basting stitch. Now there's not much gap between those two I'm right up close to it so I tend to turn it around um, feel free to turn it around any which way you need to just so that you can get a good grip on it um, and again making sure that my scissor point is not going through the fabric um, sometimes it's good to put your hand underneath so you can feel and you can see there's a little fluffy bits and sometimes I'll go across and just neaten them off but make sure that my fingers underneath so I can feel that I'm not picking up any of that um, top fabric. It'd be funny if I cut one there, wouldn't it? Cut a hole. So this is a slow, slow process. If you're wanting to do this quick, um, do a square. <laughs> like I say, if you were going to put this into a feature of a quilt, um, you'd be very careful at what pattern you would choose. Um, it's a, especially a quilt, if you're doing it in each block, you'd want to make sure that it's something that's manageable and um, not going to um, whittle too much of your life away on. Unless you're wanting to do it, of course. You want to spend days on it. 
Just getting it ready. Some people do. It's, um, it's actually quite relaxing once you get into it a bit. So I just give it a bit of a haircut to get a bit closer. I like to have it reasonably neat around it. So if I see little bumpy bits, I'll come back and I'll clean them up as I go around. So when you get into these pointy bits down here, having that point on the end of these duckbills is quite good because they get right up close to the stitching without actually um, going and cutting the stitching. I could, you could if you if you um, went too far, but like I say, you just take it nice and steady. If you end up with little bits of fluff under there, which I have, I'll come back and trim them up. So to trim them up, I can put that there and being very careful not to cut my fabric. It's very sharp scissors. Make sure they're all picked up. Get a bit close to that. If you can see there, even though I'm fairly close, I like it to be like that. This is a bit far away, this little bumpy bit. So that edge there, I don't like that square edge on the corner, so I'll probably give that a bit of a clean up. Just watching my fabric. You can hear in the background, that's my sheep, my pet sheep, <laughs> her name is Lulu, and uh, she's just been shorn and put in a new paddock, so she's um, having a bit of a moment calling out to me, wanting my attention. So you can see I'm coming up to that one where I've gone in and around another petal. So I'm trying to be reasonably careful. I'd rather cut it three times to get there than cut it once and go through. So although it looks like I'm going reasonably fast, um, it does feel like I'm going a little bit at a time. Even Lulu feels my pain. So I've got a nice point in there and then I'll take the corner around this little one. And then put my scissors under, hand underneath so I can feel whether I'm going through the fabric and work my way around. If I do snip the, the basting stitch, um, I don't stress, I just keep going and um, if I need to just stitch over or pin it down I will but um, 9 times out of 10 it will just hold until I get to the point where I need to sew the next step. So in this tutorial we'll get through this section, I'll show you how to um, finish this off as in the edging. And I'll show you what wadding you're going to put in it. Sorry, I'm moving around. Camera ladies trying to follow me. <laughs> so, very important in these small little grooves that you get as close as you can. And like I said, it could take me a couple of goes to get it as close as I can because um, I want to make sure that I keep that really tight and clean so that when I come to stitch the next stitch, it doesn't make it hard for my um, machine to get around it. Um, I was inspired by this um, with... Sally Clifton's um, last pattern I, I did on the, um, the 
bobbin work and I thought right I'll look up some flower picks and um, found a couple and thought right now I just need to draw them the way I want them to be <clears throat> something you can do yourself kids colouring books are great for these sort of things as well um, because they've got a nice outline and you can pick out what parts you want to do there's lots of ways of doing these and creating some great fun patterns for kids and family members, friends and you can see it's um, a little bit more fiddly with a smaller flower and you can imagine if I did all those tiny little things how long it would take okay, I really want to get a little bit closer there so I can get some definition between one and the other um, because uh, I don't want them sort of just blending in. I want to see the difference between the petals. So if I don't get it out now, when I do my next stitching, I won't be able to get it out. It'll always be there. So the idea is to work on it now, take my time, um, and uh, get it right first time around. You can see how thick the Dacron is. It's, um, it's almost like layers. Um, it's a real synthetic product. It feels rough, but um, once you put your wool and or your your 100% cotton over the top, um, that'll you won't feel that roughness. It'll be, just be soft and squishy. I love Trapunto, it's um, quite fun and not as hard as it all seems. You see these amazing looking quilts with Trapuntoed borders and you think, oh gee, how do they do that? But this is pretty much how it works. You could hand baste if you wanted to, you can do it all by hand. Um, these steps are possible by hand sewing. Um, your final stitch on your hand sewing would have to be tight to um, hold it all down nice and firm through all those layers. Um, but I'm not going to live long enough, I say it quite often, to make everything by hand, which I would love to be able to do, but it's not going to happen. So I do a lot of mine on machine. Um, so I'll be teaching Trapunto in Geelong so if you're in you live in Australia and you want to go to um, one of my workshops you can go to the Geelong at um, Ballerine Sewing Centre they um, I often do workshops there for Zoe and John and the girls and uh, have a nice small cult following which I love. I love my girls that come to my workshops and all their support. They're very, very, um, very nice ladies. So you're more than welcome to come along and corrupt the group and join in on the fun. You can see I've got a bit of a fluffy bit there. I've got to be careful I don't trim that fabric. Um, good lighting helps, <laughs> especially white on white. Um, for those who live in the country and um, want to go catch up with me, I do a lot of workshops in Ballarat as well, Statewide Sewing Centre, and uh, we do quite a few different types of workshops. I'm doing a crazy patch workshop very shortly, February. Um, so yeah, lots lots of things on the cards. My year is booked. I'll be booking into next year I think from here on in. It's only January 2017 so it's going to be a busy old year. And next year we're going to Indonesia for a tour 
which I think is going to be super awesome fun. And uh, we're just going to have a holiday. We'll just go and see all the, um, the crafts of the, the country and um, how they make batiks and all that sort of thing. Uh, basket weaving and there'll be days for shopping, of course. And uh, yeah, I think, we'll, I think it's about 10 days we're going to go. And that information will be up on my website. I'm getting there, it's slowly but surely. I almost cut my fabric. It's not a matter of if, but when I'm going to cut through it, I suppose. One day I'll cut through my top fabric, like Kimmy says. Thing with this too is if you like to do the zen tangle or zen quilting type of uh, stitchery you can really make this um, trapunto pop by um, applying that method as well around it this one I'm probably going to do quite a bit of free motion around it because I like to do that if you don't like heavy quilting you don't have to the more quilting you do around a trapunto, the more it stands out. It becomes more prominent because it pushes all the background down and that trapunto section will stand up and uh, be more obvious. getting there, nearly done, nearly around it and I'll do a few clean up bits, trimming, trimmings I should say, just to clean it up a little. <coughs> there's definition between them the petals otherwise they'll just blend into each other so we've got one more section and it's probably the hardest one so I will show you that one next and that's the bit that's in between these two flowers um, I'm just gonna give that a shake get all the bits off so in here this is the the part that we need to do um, next so what I do is I slowly cut through until I feel the fabric underneath but I haven't gone through with my scissors and then I just slowly trim up through the center and that opens it up and you can sort of feel it underneath with your finger and that opens up the center and then just slowly trim because it goes fluffy, that's the uh, product, and trim off those fluffy bits so that you can see where you are, and then find a corner where your stitching is, and work from one side over, get to that point, and work your way around the next stitching seam, it's a basting seam really. I'm hoping you're enjoying the tutorials. If you've got any um, ideas or suggestions you'd like to see done and you'd like me to show you how to do, if you've never sort of seen it before or you 
just need a bit of help or advice feel free to comment or message message me I'm only too happy to help give you the advice best as I know if you want to see a demonstration or a tutorial on something that you haven't seen before or you you've seen me make you know most of you would know I do a lot of the art quilts um, you might want to see some of them done so I've got a bit of a mess excuse me clean that up I'm going to give it a bit of a shake and voila there's your trapunto ready and rearing to go for the next step so the next step for me is to get two bits of wadding now you can use um, a, cotton and a, wad, a cotton and a wool or you can use a um, two cottons or two wools but I like to use a natural fiber for this section because it makes it just feel a little bit softer so this one here is a wool 100% wool so I'll be putting two bits underneath that Are you with me <laughs> Okay, so I'll just lay them on top of each other and basically this is the final step for today's little tutorial and um, there might be three steps in this just to work you through it so here I'm just going to pin you can use basting pins if you want but I'm just going to pin um, the three layers just so I can um, hold it in place my next stitching is going to be around the outside and that stitch is going to be in a color thread of the color I choose and I'm seriously thinking about a really nice hot pink something really quite you know bright and brilliant okay. don't be too fussy don't put too many pins in because you are going to handle it and you will stab yourself and then you'll bleed on it I know a project's not complete until we've bled on them, but um, I like to try and avoid bleeding on my quilts. Okay, so we're ready for the next step, step and um, I'll uh, chat to you soon.